Good evening, chat. Happy Monday. It's a beautiful fall day here in the Midwest. It was like 30 degrees Fahrenheit or minus one Celsius around there with some wind chill. Very cold. Kind of gross. And it's the end of April, so, you know, it should start being uh, summer-y at some point. I don't know when that's going to happen. Hang on here. Oh, yes. There we are. Hello, chat. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the Kerbal stream. Hopefully the final Kerbal stream. Uh, we can get into some different games. I'm I'm going for XCOM 1, I think, is going to be the number one contender. But if you've got an idea, if, if enough people are like, hey, do this, do that, do whatever, then I'm, uh, you know, give the people what they want. So let's take a look. Let's head over to the game. We need to see where we left off. There's a little bit of housekeeping that needs to be done. Uh, look, We're looking a little light on fundage, actually. What's going on with that? Only got half a million. Unusual. I guess we blew it all on... Like, random nonsense? I got like a string on me, what the heck? Where did that come from? Is it attached to my... Ant leg? I guess so. We'll deal with that later. Okay, so what do they want me to do? My cat is coming to visit. Everybody say hello to cat. There he is. He's got itchies, apparently. So we'll uh we'll work around him. Hi, Emikins. Glad you could uh could join us. Science data from surface of Duna, which we can't get because Alright, buddy. You're gonna need to pick a Pick a spot. Yeah, we can't really do the science data from Surface of Duna due to a um, technical mishap. Hey, Ice Queen. Yeah, he was he was up here. You guys are wondering his name is Cat, uh, C A T, Cat, like the animal, and he is named after the cat from Breakfast at Tiffany's. So, fun Star Shard Deep Lore there. All right, we need to launch one final piece of the puzzle. And that is going to be our... Uh, not the lander. I guess it's like the core? Uh, okay, we're going to call it the core, but it doesn't... Oh, God, yeah, we don't need all that. Let's try the fuel. Eve ship fuel. May have gone too far in a few places. There it is. How much is it? Okay, this is only 155 grand, and we're going to be cutting that down by quite a bit here. We're getting rid of that. We are adding a... Let's see here. We are adding uh, a lander thingy I've used okay this one the mark II lander cam and the purpose of this thing is just to actually okay here actually hmm no this is this is fine like this the purpose of this thing is pretty strictly to house the engineer staff and actually we'll put a little thing on there yes we also have an orange cat i guess i haven't seen joey i guess he must be orange as well if you're saying that all right two and a half meters there we go. no we don't oh no we don't want the service bay we want a load we want this one there we go and this should house all the stuff we need for this. And how are we doing? Well, I'm doing all right. Uh, Emikins has been a little frantic on account of dinner. Which ended up being great, but 
there was, it was a close call if it was going to get done before stream, I think. And we had our anniversary yesterday. We have been married for 13 years, which might not seem like a lot, but it is. Okay, those are on there correctly, I believe. And that should be good. So we are going to be bringing a engineer and our last pilot. Ugh. No, no, no. Actually, no, we can't bring anybody because. No, okay. Because we need room for Valentina, so that's not going to work. So we'll have to do it this way. So pull this off. Okay, we need to reroute this actually. Right, reroute to that. Okay, and then take off the engine. Take this stuff. Move this. Put that there. And that way... Everything is where it needs to be. We can put some solar panels on this. Well, it's not really... Oh, it has solar panels. Never mind. We don't need that much solar power. Like, it's not doing anything with power. And... Let's go ahead and edit the fairing down. It's a bit uh, oversized, as you can tell. Anyway, this is, like I said, this is hopefully going to be the last KSP stream. Or this career, at least. I mean, we might revisit it in the future if there's a clamoring or an outcry from you guys. But for the most part, uh, this should be it. And I will be so relieved when we get to Eve. Well, I'll, I'll be relieved when we get back from Eve, I should say. Because, you know, it's Eve. It's like the hardest thing in the game. This is it's nonsense associated with it. All right, this might be a little overkill with all these extra fuel tanks. How is that? And that's going to be not good. Hmm. If we just ditch the side boosters, it might be better. Oh my. Uh, what's that set? Okay, that is set at sea level, so that's pretty overpowered for what we need it to do. But I guess I'd rather be overpowered than underpowered here. Alright, alright, alright. Let's focus. Getting distracted. I don't even know by what. So how's everybody doing today? It's Monday. I know that is, um, you know, people don't like Mondays. Garfield doesn't like Mondays, despite the fact that he has a cat and literally doesn't know or care what day it is. In fact, he should love Mondays because then John leaves the house to go to work and Garfield can just sleep all day. But I don't know. Alright, this is the Eve Ship Service module, I guess. I didn't really call any of the other ones modules, but... And this is going to need some very important bits inside. We're going to need girders. Uh-oh. Construction only part. Oh, that's not very nice. Uh, how about the little ones? Okay, we can do little ones. Perfect. We'll just throw like, oh, okay. I guess five is the most we can put in there. That's unfortunate. Um, in that case, we'll just do four. And then we want a bunch of struts. Because one of the issues we're having with this thing is the fact that it's wobbling. I was hoping that using The girder, girder's point one two five. The I beam, okay. The I beam is more heavier. You know, I was hoping that it wouldn't wobble too much if we used the docking port seniors, but that was not the case. So we're gonna have to use the girders and the struts to fix that problem. 
and you know we need to bring Valentina home when we're done it's kind of important all right let's go ahead and this does not have an antenna on it probably put one on it in fact this might need a very large antenna because we're gonna need it to go kind of far we'll use this one oh wait a minute there we go see how that looks extended I mean, it doesn't look terrible yeah we'll 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 put it in the back I think it looks better back here wish it didn't clip into the actually no it doesn't look too bad clipped in okay is there anything else that we need I don't think so do, do, do. done there are parachutes missing that's fine docking ports used as decouplers that's fine so yeah this is going to take us to our our ship the eve the eve thing we're gonna dock this up we basically have to like pull it apart like a train and then slide this part in and then push them back together that is the plan and let's double check the cargo, double check the crew. We have Le Lehman is a level one. Do we have a better engineer? We don't. Okay, that's disappointing, but that's okay. I don't know that higher levels can do anything. Provides repair skills, repack parachutes. Engineers can blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think we can still construct with a level one. I don't think that's gonna cause any problems. If it does, we'll just have to... I don't know. I have no idea. Alright, I think that's all we need. We have plenty of Delta V. Probably a little bit too much, honestly. And we'll save it up. And we will get ready for the launch. So... What did I do this weekend? Let's find out. I have to think real hard about it. Oh, right, there's a bunch of other stuff around here. Hang on. Check in on the Eve Station stuff. So I picked up a new game that just released on Steam called The Terraformers, which is another terraforming Mars type game. This thing, I believe we can just deorbit. Oh, no, don't time warp. Yeah. So this will just go ahead and deorbit itself. And that's really fun. It reminds me a lot of my favorite board game, which is Terraforming Mars. Uh, I guess, I don't know, something about the idea of Terraforming Mars is, like, interesting to me. All right, here we go. And I believe, yeah, we should be good. So we can go ahead and go back to Space Center and check in on some of the other ships that we launched or whatever the other bits of this ship that are debris or need to burn up and re-entry or whatever okay so I'm going to be extra calm tonight extra cool I don't want to mess anything up and this I think okay we'll check out on the lander debris which I think is just some like the back part of one of the launch things that we... Oh, okay, it's this thing. Yeah, that's just gonna get destroyed, so that's fine. That was the part that I believe pushed the lander into position. So let's check in on the ship itself. So this is the current design of the ship. It's not pretty but it'll get the job done, and that's all that I care about. So basically the plan is we separate this piece and this, so basically orange tank down, uh, probe core up, we slide our, our new piece into the middle, and then we link them back up like a train. 
This is the Eve Lander. This is what's going to actually be going down to the surface. It's very large and weird, but I hope that it works. If it doesn't work, then I don't know. We might, we'll might we probably just end the career anyway, because um, I, I think I've reached my limit on how much I'm willing to tolerate of Kerbals. Okay, that is those. Oh, geez, the staging is all goofy. Yeah, we'll definitely have to double check the staging before we set down. Yeah, we got the drogues on there. We got the regular parachutes. My biggest concern is that it's going to like flip around on re-entry, which is why we have the Verners and the twitches are hopefully going to help us maintain our course. So we'll worry about that when we get there. So the next thing we need to do is get rid of the debris and then we will go ahead and launch so we can do our rendezvous. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And then once we have this all situated, we'll need to figure out when our transfer window is for you. I haven't even done that yet. Yeah, this can just get terminated. And we'll go ahead and time warp until Eve Station is around there. Not Eve Station, Eve Ship, we're calling it. I think it's all one word. I don't remember. Okay, go to the VAB. Load the vessel. Load the vessel. Double check the payload. The Eve ship service module. Crew. Okay, see, we're already in an interesting situation. Okay, so Liamin, whatever, it's there. Cargo is good. Is there anything else we might want to bring? Like, honestly, anything that we put in here isn't going to slow us down too much. So why don't we bring a repair kit? I can't think of what we would need to repair, but just to be safe. Um, science stuff. No, no, no. I don't think we need any of this. Because we do, we do have a relay, and we can get rid of this antenna, since we're putting a bigger antenna on there. We do have a relay in orbit of EVE, and that should cover us, hopefully. We don't need any robotics. All right, I think this is good. This is all that I can think of. So, double check. We only have Lehman in there. She's our engineer. Um... We're not bringing a scientist or anything that's unnecessary. The extra space is for Valentina to get back into when it's time to come home. And then when we get home, we'll have to send up a ship to recover them because this is not designed for re-entry. Why is it not designed for re-entry? I, I don't know, that's like extra steps I don't want to have to worry about. So I believe we are good to launch. Parachute missing, don't care. Docking port's fine. Go ahead and launch. I want to keep the throttle a little bit low because the thrust to weight is almost two. It's a bit high. And fun story. Okay, this weekend, yes. So terraformers, I picked that up. But also something I did this weekend. I I snuck in a little bit of star sector. I did a little off-stream grinding and went ahead. For those of you who care about Star Sector, I built a full phase fleet using the Ziggurat. And I am, I think I'm about to the point where we can go steal the Nano Forge from the Hegemony. They've been a thorn in my side for like three weeks now. And I'm finally going to put a stop to it this Friday. It's going to be great. We're also going to go snag some Omega weapons, which are uh, in... I don't know how much spoily I want to get for this game, but basically there was a place we went to and there was some secret weapons that I didn't pick up because I didn't know they were there. 
So we're gonna go back to that place and we're gonna pick up those weapons. Get our focus here. I think we're doing all right. Keeping our thrust to weight nice and normal. Right around 1.6. Getting a little bit tilty. Keep it nice and easy. And then we'll go ahead and point prograde. Keep our time to apoapsis around, I think 30 seconds is what people typically say. So we'll just do it. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Hmm. Well, I'm a little bit concerned that it's not going up as fast as I would like. So maybe we'll, we'll get it out to like 45 seconds or something. I think we're out of the thicker part of the atmosphere, so we can just go hard. I don't want to go too hard. Like, okay, we're going a little bit too hard there. Okay, we're still getting heat effects. There's something called Max Q that got mentioned during that Kerbal fanfiction stream, and I have no idea what that means. I think it has something to do with the density of the atmosphere. But I had, I had never heard of that term before. The only Q that I know is the character from Star War or Star Trek. I almost said Star Wars. In fact, I did say Star Wars. I just now did. No, Q is from Star Trek: The Next Generation, and I guess Picard technically. Um. Okay. There we go. We're gonna start slowing it down. And how, what, okay, we are at 90,000 meters that we need to get to. I guess we'll cruise up to that and call it good. Still getting some heating on the fairing there, so we'll wait to detach it. This has been a pretty successful launch, if I do say so myself. I think we can go ahead and ditch that. There we go. That gives us, wow, 40 whole meters per second. Beautiful. In fact, we're actually losing it because the uh, ISP in a vacuum is less than in the atmosphere. Which is interesting. I guess there are engines that work like that. I don't know anything about base engines. But I guess some of them are more efficient in atmosphere than they are in a vacuum. Otherwise, KSP would not have that. Go ahead and set that as target. This should be a very easy rendezvous to set up. Speaking of rendezvous, is anybody excited for the Rendezvous with Rama movie that's coming out from Denis Villeneuve, who also made Dune and is making Dune Part 2, and also did, like, Blade Runner 2049 and Arrival. No, he's a he's a science fiction guy, I guess. Much more so than I am. Okay. So we will be approaching the intersect point. Two minutes. And that's right around our apoapsis, so should be pretty easy to just start the burn circularize and then set up the rendezvous for the next orbit. And in other movie news, this weekend's movie was Blast from the Past. That was the the holdover movie from last week that we didn't get to watch because of Easter. But we got to watch it and it was pretty good. If you've not seen it. It's got Brendan Fraser, it's got Christina Applegate it's got uh, Christopher Walken and Sissy Spacek. It's just it's a star-studded affair from 1999. Back when all those people... When a, some of those people were, were quite popular. I guess Christopher Walken's always been pretty popular. And Sissy Spacek was Carrie. I think. Is that right? Was she Carrie? Emmy Kins, can you, can you fact-check that? Who was the Carrie in the new movie? Was it anybody cool? I know they did a remake, but I don't know if it was any good. There we go. 
my water here. I gotta remember to stay hydrated today. Last time I got super, super dry. Okay, got a little too hydrated there. Spilled some. It's okay though. It's just water. Okay, 40 seconds to go. Be a nice smooth one, hopefully. Okay. Set up those intersect points again. I, or whatever. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Limited crew control. Okay, well, that's better than no crew control. I can at least sort of hold that. Okay, so once we pass this point, we're going to want to start throttling up. That is interesting that we have both limited crew control, but also... Hang on, let me open the, the antenna here. We might need that. See if that gives us anything. Okay. okay, so we do still get to do this, which is nice. All right, so this is going to be our next rendezvous. We basically just need to get those to touch. And then we're golden. Oh, shoot. We overshot a bit. Um, hang on. There we go. I wanted this to enter the atmosphere on its own, but, um, I mean, it still will. It'll just be weird. Okay. I think, I think, yeah, we just keep burning here. The, uh, intersect should wrap around. There it goes. Okay. Once we extend our apoapsis that far enough, it should loop back around and then, yeah, see, there it goes. Now it's going to start coming closer and closer and closer. All right, now I switch to this one. So we just need to get that down to zero. And basically, all the fuel in this thing is whatever. I, I think, is that right? Yeah, because all this fuel's going to get ditched. Just wanted to make sure before I burn it all. Hey, Rillip's here. Is this, No, this, we're not returning yet. We still have to go. But my plan is, once this ship is assembled, we're going to launch and do the whole mission tonight. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't take more than two and a half hours. Chloe Grace Moretz played her in the 2013 carry. Okay. Was that one any good? Did I already ask that? I feel like sometimes remakes are good and you, you'll hear about it. But then other times they're not so great. Well, nah, I screwed that up. All right, let's fix that. Here we go. Do, 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 do. I should have waited till we passed the intersect point. That was my mistake. Ice Queen liked the new carry. All right, all right. That's fair. I've only seen the original one, so I have no real point of reference. Right, I think the difference here is going to be the inclination. So we'll just have to, yeah, we'll just have to change that as we get closer. Actually, we are approaching a descending node, so that could work. All right, let's do this. We're gonna go ahead and time warp. Oh, I owe you guys one of these. And I actually have a plan for another, uh, another soundboard thing that I haven't got to add yet. But we did add this one that, well, I won't play it yet, but we will use it tonight, hopefully. Okay. So we are, this is descending, so we want to go ascending or normal. And this should cancel out our inclination change. So there we go. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. We're going to be at 1.7 kilometers apart. Not an issue. We'll just settle that when we get a little closer. All right, here we go. 
looping around. And of course, the service module debris is going to enter the atmosphere. It's going to skim the top and then it's going to come back out because stuff that's on rails will not get deleted automatically unless it goes under, I want to say, 25 kilometers. So you can just have something in an orbit that gets down to like 30 kilometers and it, like the game doesn't care. It's very strange. Okay, so we do have an intersect coming up. This is not the one that we're looking for. We're waiting on intersect one there. Aren't they? They're making uh, another Stephen King movie, uh, Firestarter, which I have not read or seen, or I obviously haven't seen it. I saw some trailers. And it just looks like an X-Man type movie. Like, oh my god, she's got fire powers. We have to do something about her. She could be a superhero. Like, well, maybe not. Maybe she doesn't want to be a superhero. Maybe she wants to be a supervillain. You ever think about that? All right, let's fix this. So we want to go like this. And luckily this thing is very maneuverable, so that's very helpful. Scooch it in there. In fact, I, no, no, okay. They played the Billie Eilish bad guy song for the bad, it's the bad guys, the new animated movie, which they also played that in the ending credits for Brightburn, which is the movie about like evil Superman kid. Hey, Gamer Elliptical. Thanks for stopping by tonight. This is hopefully the last KSP stream if I'm lucky, and I do real good, this could be it. We are assembling our interplanetary mission to go to EVE and return. We just have to slot this last module into the ship and then do a little bit of orbital construction and then we're good to go. Okay. We need to get a little bit closer here. Let's adjust our velocity here. There we go. All right. Perfect. We are on track to hit this target. It's going to be great. Hopefully we'll have enough sunlight that we can do the docking, undocking, redocking, all that stuff. Ooh, all right, getting a little, a little stressed out here. I really want this to go well. Getting close. We're getting close. And now we play the waiting game. Uh, the waiting game sucks. Let's play Hungry Hungry Hippos. You said it, Homer. Maybe we'll do that instead. Does anybody have Hungry Hungry Hippos? I had that game as a kid, and I I assume it got thrown out or sold at a yard sale or something, and just I've never seen it since then. Maybe my parents still have it. I, I, I doubt it. Like, a, all the stuff that I had, like, long gone. Oh, so far. Rillip has a travel version that only has two hippos. Oh. Well, that doesn't sound... That sounds like it would just break. I remember um, my family, for whatever reason, used to love going on road trips. So we had all these like travel versions of games and books and I had my Game Boy. But guess what? I get super car sick so I can literally do nothing in the car. All I can do is sit there and look out the window. It's It was miserable. We do these eight hour long car drives and I all I could do was sit there. I couldn't fall asleep because, you know, you're in a bumpy car. Uh, I couldn't read because I'd get sick. I couldn't play video games because I'd get sick. It was miserable. Anyway, you're, yeah, you, you're very fortunate that nobody gets car sick. So, but it's not like I, I don't get car sick just from being in a car. I have to if I start reading or something. 
So I can drive a car fine. I can ride in a car just fine. But if I try to do something other than just sit there quietly, it turns into a... I don't know. Turns into a car sickness. All right, here she is. The, the Eve ship. This baby's gonna take us across the solar system in style. Hopefully. All right, so we need to decouple this section here. Uh, right? Yep, okay. So let's switch, switch. Yeah, we need to undock. Uh, okay. Undock. There we go. Go ahead and... Oh, other way around. Like that. Move away from it. Okay. Then this needs to aim at that. And we're going to attach this part to here. And then we're going to attach the whole assembly back to the main part here. It's... I realize it looks kind of kind of wonky. All your kids fall asleep in the car. Oh, man, I wish I could have. I mean, if I got tired enough, I could fall asleep in the car. But, man, it was just... I don't know. It was awful. Spent many, many years being miserable in the car. Let's get this down to 0.5. There we go. Alright, and this should work. So yeah, we just attach this, then we reattach it here, and it all works out. Beautiful. Blow it down a bit. Go to find controls, just to make sure everything is extra good. Yeah, this should be a nice, easy docking maneuver. Perfect. Can we go ahead and decouple this debris? Actually, can we transfer some fuel over, maybe? I don't know if... I I highly doubt it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and undock. We want to control from here. We want to set... This is the target now. We want to change that. And this piece... Needs to point at that. Let's see if it'll do it. Oh, SAS disengaged because we lost control. Great. All right, that's fine. We can fix that. Okay, go, go, go. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a hassle, but we brought plenty of monoprop, so let's use it, right? Oh yeah, we should probably turn off find controls. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. Okay. So here we go. Yeah, it's just gonna be a bit of a pain. Oh, other way around. We need to go ahead and catch up with this. Because right now it's in a bit of a... Yep, there we go. Emikin says, if I remember right, both were better than the... Wait, there's a 2002 one? This is news to me. Is... Okay, so... Hang on. Alright, 1976 is... That's the one with Sissy Spacey. 2013 is the Chloe Grace Moretz. And then 2002 was also... A carry remake. Interesting. I did not know about the 2002 one, like I said. So, hey, if you've seen all three of them, tell us in the chat which one is best. What is the best carry movie? Why do they keep making movies? What is so fascinating about this? Okay. Here we go. So now it's just a matter of 
getting everything oriented correctly. It was a TV movie that was kind of supposed to be a pilot for a potential TV series. Oh, gross. Do you guys know they made an Uncle Buck TV show? Have you guys heard about this? So, it was basically... I don't know if it was meant to be like a retelling of the story that would some of the bits and pieces changed, or if it was like a sequel to the movie. Um... And this isn't the the new Uncle Buck show or movie or whatever that came out. This was like in the 90s in the era of home improvement and all those other sitcoms. But basically, uh, it wasn't very good and nobody watched it, which is why you've never heard of it. Okay, yep. just have to orient ourselves here. Shouldn't be it too difficult. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Okay. Slow it down. I mean, because Uncle Buck is such a good movie. Like, you know somebody's going to see that success and say, hey, what if we made a TV show based on it? I mean, yeah, John Candy's dead, but yeah, it could be good. I think he might have still been alive at this point. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I think they cut out the older girl. The older older girl character. Which is like the little kids. But that might not be true. I don't know that much about it. Okay, let's go. Hang on, we're getting a little... Things are getting a little spicy here. What's going on? Let the magnets do the work, maybe? Will that help? Oh, okay. Magnets are not helping. Come on, magnets. Come on. Do your thing. How do they work? Come on. Oh. Pain in the butt, this is. This is why I don't build things in orbit. Because it just, it turns into the, okay, we're done. All right, RCS off. All right, now, finally, um, that part of the mission is done. Thank God. Okay, so what we have now is, uh, we have the engine stage. We have the extra fuel stage. We have the return slash uh, engineering module. We have the tug, and then we have the lander itself. The only thing that should be coming home should be the uh, return bit here, the, the service module and the engine section. And it's possible that some of the engines will be gone by then. So it'll be a much smaller vehicle. Okay, let's do the next part of this, which is going to be the welding section. So my plan is, let's see, where's a good spot for this? Because essentially the problem we're having is when we are under acceleration, we start wobbling. And I want zero wobble on this thing. That's not the one you want. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to hop out, and we're going to do a little bit of orbital welding work. And I'm going to put it on the engine, or the, the fuel section, because that is where we're going to run into our biggest problems, because this is so long. And at the end, it's just going to be these two pieces stuck together anyway. So that way we'll leave excess weight behind. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of construction. We're going to slap one over here. I think that'll work. It's going to look a little wonky, but should be okay. And then one over here. Come on, game. Something like that. Put that there. Okay, so yeah, whatever. It's It's not perfect. We should probably attempt to make it as symmetrical as possible, though, just to be safe. All right. 
So let's actually do that then. We can take our time here. There's no rush. We're in orbit. Everything is good. Oh, we should get some snap going. What am I doing? Yeah, we can talk. Okay, we can toggle snap. Good. Over there. All right, perfect. I. Okay, that should go right through. And then next, we're going to go ahead and grab one of these. Okay, yep. Can we can we strut that up or what? What's going on here? Come on, game. Come on. There we go. Does not like that strut position. Is there a way to like arrest my velocity? It's very frustrating. I have to constantly maneuver. I'm trying to build. I guess if I had a ladder, I could grab onto that, whatever. So that is gonna go up to here. Actually, no, it should probably go up to like here. Can't can't do that, huh? Alright. Thanks, game. What is the problem here? No, put that back. Okay. Apparently, this isn't going to work the way I want it to work. So let's do this. Uh, we need another one of these. We're going to put that over here. For whatever reason, it won't let me build it there. That's weird. Come on, game. Come on. Okay, it's not letting me build anything, chat. What's going on here? I knew this was going to happen. This is why you should never trust this weird in-situ building system. Because it's never going to work in your favor. Alright, you know what? We, we're not going to need the RCS for now, so let's get rid of that. Okay, now we can do it. It was the RCS was the problem. All right, so we'll just go ahead and take off the RCS. We can always put that back later. That's what we're here for after all. Here to do some building and welding and all that stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna grab this strut. Hey, Vulcan Rider, we're just doing a little bit of uh, building in space right now. You've joined at an excellent time. How's your, uh, how's your KSP going? You got it working yet? Oh my God. Okay, this isn't working. Okay, so what we need to do is start building. No. Okay. Let me just attach it over here. So we get closer. Should be that easy. It should be that easy. Should be that easy. Why, game? Why is it not that easy? Should be that easy. That was easy. Is, is this, does this not work? Am I trying to do something that is impossible? Can you not strut across? Um, okay, that looks like it works. Does that work? Okay, well, that's, you know what? That's better than nothing, so we'll go ahead and I'll allow that. That's fine. Like, ultimately, as long as we have a little bit of extra whatever, like, stability, it should be fine. Okay, let's go ahead and set this up now. Nope, that's not going to work, because I was in the way. Okay, nope, still not working. Cool, cool. We'll get it, chat, don't worry. Can't hide from me forever. Oh, okay. Am I doing it in like a weird kind of way here? You just installed Scatterer and Parallax. Everything is working. That sounds like a lot of mods to be adding to your vanilla KSP game. Oh, okay. Come on.
Finally, jeez. Okay. So now we just need to do the other side. Let's go ahead and drop off our parachute. We're not going to be needing that. Okay, I guess we can't bring struts with us for whatever reason. They're too heavy. We'll just have to do it that way. And let's do it like this. It's going to be one of these situations. Okay. Right, something like that should work. All I'm doing, all I'm trying to do right now is make it so that it doesn't wobble. It's all that I care about. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, there we go. Yep, just put it like that. And then we'll go over there. And we'll put it the rest of the way. I, I realize this looks like garbage. That's that's fine. Doesn't matter how it looks. All that matters is how it works. Okay, yep, that works. And then finally, we do our last bit here, where we just run from here to here. Or not. This Kerbal keeps getting in the way. All right, so a couple of things, if you guys are going to be doing orbital construction, uh, make sure that you have like a ladder or something to sit on so you don't fly off into space constantly. Uh, also, I don't know, maybe just build, just build better to start with, then you won't have to do this. Okay, then that goes like that. Okay, I guess it doesn't. Come on. Come on. Oh, see, I see you can't move when you've like got the part. So, like, I'm sitting here trying to put stuff down, and it's not working uh, because I keep flying out of control. There we go. All right. That part is done. And now finally, we add the finishing touches to over here. We just do something like that. Okay, uh, you know what? No, that doesn't work, does it? I was gonna say that might work, but I think we wanna actually attach to these little pods here. The asparagus staging bits. There we go. Also, maybe pick something besides these girders to use as your stability assist. Learn from my mistakes, chat. Okay. And yes, Emikins is going to be on stream tomorrow. So if that's something that you are interested in, save the date. Possibly an alien is going to be on a podcast tomorrow. So she won't be able to, uh, to host us. Which I, that's awesome. She's going to be on a podcast. Let me, I want to be on a podcast now. Okay, grab on, go inside. And we're done with that. Beautiful. Okay, let me get some water here. Yikes. What am I hoping for from Kerbal Space Program 2? I am specifically into the, like, logistical elements. So sending supplies, building off-world colonies, that kind of stuff. Also Interstellar. That's the big one. I think everybody's looking forward to that. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I got my fingers crossed. I hope it's going to be good. I hope it's got a little, little something for everybody. Like the people who like KSP1, they're going to have, you know, all the basic stuff. Then they're going to have the colony stuff for the people who like that stuff. They're going to have like a form of automation for people who like that stuff. They're going to have Interstellar, which is for me. Hopefully more science, more technologies. Since it's going to be multiplayer, if they're going to have space combat, I, I'm i guessing there won't be like built-in guns, but you can probably just slam into each other. I don't think that's... Like, honestly, multiplayer is... I don't care. Territory. 
Like, okay, yeah, that's cool, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's not, it's not a, it's not designed to be multiplayer friendly, or at least KSP1 was never designed to be multiplayer friendly. And I don't know, if, aside from just having multiple people launching missions at the same time, you were never good at KSP. You accidentally made it to the gas giant once through a sheer coincidence. Wow, that's a lot of luck. Holy moly. Getting to Jewel. Like, on a whim. All right. So let's go ahead and head back to the space center. We've got our interplanetary vehicle set up. Now we just need to await the transfer window. For that, I have my trusty handy dandy notebook. We're going to write down the transfer window. Come on. All right, and we need to delete a few things. Step one, delete the debris. Yep. Uh, delete the service module debris. And we're good. All right. The lander itself is ready to go. And let's head off to look at the transfer window planner. KSP transfer, blah, blah, blah. Why did I, have I not bookmarked this yet? Probably bookmark this. You know what I do have bookmarked? I have had to be a juggalo bookmarked from that wiki house stream that I did. You guys remember that one? Yikes. Okay, we're going to Eve. I know you guys can't see this. Actually, you know what? I'll make it so you guys can see it. Why not? Emikin says, oh god, yes, for the how to be a juggalo. That was an amazing stream. Actually, here, I have them all saved. Let me uh, switch over to the Firefox here. And I will do a quick rundown of all the different wikihows. So we had... Oh, not history. No, no, no. Bookmarks. How to be a juggalo. Juggalos are the fans of the band Insane Clown Posse and their record label Psychopathic Records. Um, the other one was bookmarks. Three ways to survive an ostrich encounter, or how to survive an encounter with an ostrich. Uh, yep, hit it with a stick. That was a good one. And then the other one was... How to make a garden gnome that looks like your husband. Uh, how to trick your friends into thinking you traveled abroad. Four ways to be really sexy with your boyfriend. Was the other one. All right, we're going to Eve. Let's do this. They were at 90 kilometers. And we are at year 30, day 273. 273. Let's plot it. Let's write this down. Uh Oh wow, we get to leave really soon. So year 31 day 14. So that's coming up here. And then the ejection delta V is prograde 1024 and normal is minus 23.8. Okay. There we go. Go ahead and switch back over to the game. Beautiful. So yeah, I don't know exactly what we're going to be doing tomorrow. I know I had suggested doing some Slime Rancher. But Emikins wants to do some more quizzes. So it will probably be a little split of both. So you can watch her fail at a game and then you can watch me fail at some quizzes. It'll be a good time. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and put in an alarm or a transfer window. We'll see how accurate that is. Kerbin to Eve. Year 31, day 24, day 343. Um, okay, that's pro actually good. No, wait, that's not good. Yeah, we don't want that one. One year, 70 days. 
Yeah, no, we want like under a year. Right, we'll just do it manually then. Yeah. Okay. So we're heading to year 31. Uh, day 14, it says. And yes, this week's movie was Blast from the Past, a fantastic movie from the 90s starring... Uh, well, oh, wait, what's his name? Oh, no. I got streamitis. Brendan Fraser, that's his name. I'm like, Ben something? No. Not Ben. But yeah, that was great. Come oh, on. Maybe we can go full time warp here. I don't know when the day split or the year split is, so I, I want to be extra careful. Wolken Rider says, I actually caught the movie that couldn't be made now on TV. Oh, Blazing Saddles. Nice. They left pretty much everything in it. Yeah, it's not... It's not... There's nothing in it that's, like, offensive. It's just... Uh, they don't make westerns anymore, so the stuff that it is lampooning... It's like watching an old movie. It's like, okay, I don't get any... It's like Mad, 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 Mad World. It's like, okay, yeah, it's funny. There's, like, a lot of slapstick, but I don't get any of the references. Like, Blazing Saddles was lampooning the western genre and they don't make westerns anymore, or they don't make that kind of western anymore. It's all, like, uh, gritty, uh, came out west, killed my wife, now I'm gonna shoot dudes, that kind of stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna rob the bank. Red Dead Redemption type stuff. Okay. I think that's good enough. I think we're ready to launch, so let's check mission control quick. Science data from space round ELU. We might actually be able to get that. Let's give that a shot real quick. I actually don't know if we put any instruments on these, on the relays that we sent out, so this might not actually be something we can rely on. Uh... Uh... Eye in the sky, Moho. No, wait, no, no, no. Hang on. We need to toggle the relays on. There we go. Elu relay. Right, let's see what it's got. They still make westerns. What? Okay. Name one western. Okay, yeah, I don't think this has any stuff on it, so it doesn't actually... Oh, wait, yes, it does. Haha. -ha. We put temperature on here. Beautiful. Exactly what we needed. So there we go. We got... Ooh. We got some money. Nice. But transmit some data there as well. Oh, look, we're at like... We're at 9% signal strength. Holy cow. Okay. Back to the space center. Let's go. Westworld is technically a western. That's, I guess, it's more like a cyberpunk type movie, isn't it? Or show? But I, I suppose like the conceit of the, the theme park is that it takes place in this western themed virtual augmented reality type place, right? Okay. Eve ship time. Let's do Cyber Western. <laughs> I guess, yeah. All right. So I've got the calculations here. Let's get into my transfer position. And prepare to launch. So it was... 1,024 prograde, negative 24 normal. And all we have to do is adjust it until we are intersecting Eve. Let's do it. Okay, nope, needs to go further. There we go. Look at that, that's nice. Oh, oh, 
There it is. I see it. Oh, yeah. That is a tasty rendezvous. It's a little... It's a little eh, but... You know, that can be adjusted for. We just want to make sure we get it down to as low as possible. And then we can kind of tweak it. Oh, that's nice. It's very nice. All right, we'll take that one and we can adjust it mid-flight. We have plenty of Delta V, I think. Uh, I, I think we've got like 4,000 and it's, oh, it's only a six minute burn. That's not bad at all. That <laughs> six minute burn, that's not bad at all. Yeah, okay. Cool. Let's go ahead and point towards the maneuver. Yeah, this thing's going to take a while to turn. We have uh, a couple of reaction wheels, though, so it shouldn't be too... Well, we have one reaction wheel. We do have RCS, but I'm not going to use it. Evil in the Flowers likes Westworld's music. I don't think I've ever heard Westworld's music. Do you like The Expanse as well? Or just specifically you like Westworld? How about Raised by Wolves? Has anybody seen that show? It's so weird. So much, like, I don't know, sci-fi is such a weird genre. Just all the stuff you can do. Okay, so the node is in 31 minutes. Closer to, to round up to 32 minutes ish. And we are currently pointing. Hold on a minute. No, no, no. We want to control from here. I'm not falling for that one again. Game. Don't think you can trick me. It almost got us, chat. We were almost burned backwards. Ah. <laughs> not happening. Vulcan Rider says, all the pretty horses from 2000, Bone Hammer. Bone Hammer or Bone Tomahawk? The Holmes Man, Appaloosa, Open Range. Oh, isn't that like a cartoon? Return to Yuma, I've heard of that one. The Magnificent Seven. Meek's Cutoff. What about Wild Wild West, starring Will Smith? Now that's a Western. Based on a TV show. Um, John Carter's kind of a Western. Cowboys versus Aliens. Huh? It's a good one. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I feel like the first part of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is like a Western. Because he's like in the West and then he's on a train. Probably doesn't count, though. And I was just thinking of one. Uh, oh, the one with Leonardo DiCaprio. That's that's like a Western in the like most literal sense in that it takes place in the West of. Uh, it takes place west of the East Coast and in the like pioneer days. But that probably doesn't count. All right, we're almost look at these struts. It's ugh. I mean, we, it could have been worse. I th it doesn't look too bad, all things considered. 1833, and it can be argued that Longmire and Yellowstone are modern-day westerns. Perhaps they are. Okay. Oh, what about A Million Ways to Die in the West? That awful, awful movie. Okay. We're using a lot of electric charge for this. Can we turn that off? There we go. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and time warp here. And we want to start burning about three minutes ahead of time. Wanna split it? Looping it around. Did anybody? Okay, so I I saw John Carter, and I thought it was amazing, and I'm so disappointed they didn't make a sequel. Did anybody else see that movie, or was it just me? 
It could have literally just been me. And I took Emmy Kins to go see it. Because there's, there's not a whole lot to go on. It's like, okay, it's John Carter. Who is John Carter? Is this like John Wick? Is it is it a superhero movie? Kind of. Is it a Western? A little bit. Is it a science fiction movie? Yes. They're still making Westerns. Uh, yeah, that's the one where the dude can jump far on Mars because there's less gravity there. So he has, like, super strength compared to the native Martians. But there's a bunch of different life forms or, like, aliens that live on Mars. There's people that look like humans, and there's the green Martians and the, the other Martians. It was okay. I thought it was awesome. I think I think they really miscalculated on the marketing for that movie. So what I heard was it was originally going to be called John Carter of Mars or like John Carter and the Princess of Mars or whatever named after one of the books. And then Mars Needs Moms flopped. So Disney decided, hang on, people don't like Mars. Get Mars out of the title. And so then nobody knew what the movie was. Like, okay. Like I said, it's John Carter. Who is John Carter? I don't know who John... Nobody knows those books. And so nobody cared. Rillip was probably the other person in the theater with us. Yeah. The Mandalorian. Oh, that's true. The Mandalorian's like a space western. True, true. He's like a bounty hunter. Probably weird. Doesn't know how to handle science fiction outside of a few examples. I mean, they did Arrival. They did The Martian... They did Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. I think, like, as a whole, people just aren't that interested in science fiction. It's the same with fantasy. Although, you, then you have Lord of the Rings. Like, Lord of the Rings is a bit of an exception, though. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start burning at around three minutes, five seconds. So this is it, guys. There's no turning back once we hit these engines. We're just going to burn all the way to Eve. Okay, it's all led up to this, guys. So it's 7.15 now. So we have an hour and 45 minutes to finish this. Not true. We can go late tonight. I'm willing to do a little bit of overtime if it gets this over with like look at the movies that are in theaters right now you've got uh harry po it's not harry potter it's the fantastic beasts but not really uh it's sonic 2 oh what's the other one lurk what was the other movie that's showing oh the bad guys that's the one with, like, the big bad wolf and a shark, and they're, like, they're not evil. They're just, they're, like, the antagonist. It's, that's the whole plot, I guess. Like, just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you have to be a bad guy. Okay, here we go. We're burning. So... We shouldn't go into the atmosphere, but if we do, we'll just have to be extra careful. Yeah, we'll just keep an eye on the periapsis. Once we pass that, we'll be safe. <sighs> it's a long, it's not that long. We've had longer. It's actually surprisingly short for a nuclear powered craft. My only concern is that we potentially run out of fuel, but I don't think that's going to be a problem, considering we've got this whole thing. Is this, um, enable crossfeed? Enable crossfeed, yeah. We want to be draining from here as well. There we go, that's the number I wanted to see, 8,000 Delta V. This should be plenty to get us to even back. That's a lot of nukes. It's only seven. It's not that many. 
And we can ditch six of them in the event that we need to cut down on some weight. So what I had mentioned earlier was that, so this is the engine stage. This is the extra fuel. This is the service module and return vehicle. This is a tug, and then this is the actual craft that lands on EVE. On the way back to Kerbin, we're only going to have the engine stage and the service module. This will be basically all except for the capsule will be destroyed on EVE. The tug will leave behind and the fuel should all be used up at that point. Okay. So the hardest part is not going to be getting there. Getting there is going to be easy. Everything's very stable. Um, circularization should be easy. We should have plenty of Delta V for that. Uh, landing should be easy because we have parachutes and we have a heat shield, although I'm a little iffy on the heat shield thing. I have my concerns, but I'll take that up with Eve when we get there. So the main thing is going to be, do we have enough Delta V to get off the planet? And that's it. If we can land on Eve and get off, I can do the rest. If we can land on Eve and not get off, then I'm I'm just going to throw my hands up and say, I am done. I'm, I'm washing my hands of this game. I am done. It's a shield. You'll be okay. It does shield thing. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, Evil in the Flowers. It, it should do the shield thing, but I've, I've heard tales of it just like flipping around wildly from the drag. Oh boy, okay, we got this. We're gonna do it, chat, don't worry. I, I, I watched several YouTube tutorials on how to do this, and I don't intend to fail now. We have plenty of parachutes. We have a heat shield. At worst, Valentina will be stranded on Eve with no hope of getting off. That's the worst case scenario that I am willing to accept. If the ship explodes on, en on entry into Eve's atmosphere, I don't know. That's, that's a problem for a, a different day. If... I don't know if it, like, tips over on landing. Oh, that'd be the worst. Like, happened on Duna. And the worst part about that Duna lander is it's designed to not tip over. I don't know what the heck happened. I think I just got distracted. For whatever reason, the parachutes, like, pulled it to one side. Um, and I, you know, I'm not worried about them. They can live on Duna now, as far as I'm concerned. They're Kerbals. They like living in space, right? Oh, look, it's the KSC. Everybody wave. Goodbye. Goodbye, KSC. I watched YouTube tutorials. Yeah. Next, I'll tell you this isn't rocket science. I mean, it kind of is. I haven't done any of the rocket science myself. Other people have done that for me. I'm just doing the, the actual flight stuff. Okay. Okay. I'm starting to get that feeling in, like, my stomach chat. You know, the one where you hope that everything's going to work out. You guys ever get that? What is this? Maneuver tool. I don't care about the maneuver tool. Cannot calculate transfer when vessels... Wait. What the heck? This is a thing? When did they add this? This has been here the whole time, I just didn't know what it was. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. We could have used this. No, well, maybe not. Our burn is almost complete. And we've still got 8,000 Delta V. Haven't even used it all yet. And like I said, we're gonna make a transfer or we're going to do some adjustments mid-course, mid-course corrections to make sure that we're coming in on a pro-grade orbit this time instead of a retrograde like we did the first couple of times and 
Uh, we're not going to do any arrow breaking. We're just going to go ahead and use the nukes to slow down. Put us in a nice orbit above Eve's atmosphere. And then the actual landing craft does have engines to, like, do the descent, to do the retrograde burn. That aren't the main engine for lifting off. There's there's a couple of twitches on there that we're going to be using for that purpose. They're also designed to keep us uh, stable on re-entry. Or I guess it's just entry. Ooh, okay. This, so it's going to be fine, guys. It's going to work out. This is just, like, you know, the hardest part of the game. Alright. Here we go. We are watching Eve. Where's our line? Okay, there's our line. It's coming down. We're waiting for that little brown, orangish line to have a encounter. That's what we're looking for here. There it is. It's getting closer. It's getting closer and closer and closer. Come on. Almost there. Come on. 30. 27. 26. Hang on. Okay, we're going to switch to stability mode. All right, let's go ahead and... All right, so I can see. All right, let's just go ahead and follow keep pointing in the same direction, but I'm getting rid of the maneuver so it's not cluttering up the screen here. We're just going to watch the closest approach tick down. Until... Okay, there we go. We have our approach. Now we're just going to adjust it. So that works. And, okay. I'm going to call that good, because we're going to do some mid-course corrections here. Let's go ahead and turn off targeting mode. Okay, there we go. We're just going to cruise out of Kerbin's sphere of influence here. We're going to turn off staging because I do not want to stage anything at this point. That would be disastrous. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Kerbin escape four days. Let's go ahead and set the alarm. For 10 seconds. Fly. And warp. There we go. We're on our way, guys. Valentina will be the first Kerbin to set foot on Eve one way or another. If you could go on a deep space mission, but you couldn't come back, would I? Uh, depends on where to. If I'm just going to be on a spaceship for the rest of my life, absolutely. So, yes. I <laughs> I guess I would either way. They're like, you have to be on this spaceship for the rest of your life. Like, I already don't like leaving the house, so that's perfect. Unless it's, you know, like a submarine and it's all cramped and gross. Like, if... If everybody gets like a little apartment room and you have inter well not internet necessarily, but like computer access, I'd be perfectly happy with that. All right, so let's see where we're gonna do our mid-course correction here. Hopefully right around here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on Eve. And now we get to make some adjustments. So let's see here. So, if we're, so uh, yeah, if it's like a generation ship situation, that would be cool. I think that would be amazing. Like, I'm not, I'm not tethered to anything here on Earth specifically. I guess if I, I'd have to bring my wife with me. And she might not like it, so, you know. That's a thing. Yeah, this isn't too bad, actually. So, maybe we can adjust lightly all right that's even better even better we want to have the most 
bestest orbit we can get. That's good. That's good. All right. I'm willing to work with that. So we'll need to do a burn and then we'll need to adjust our inclination. But after that, we should be in a pretty solid... I okay, make sure we're coming in the right direction. We are coming in this direction and leaving this way. So that is a prograde orbit, which is Eve Station. Okay. Yeah. How about how about you? Would you go on a deep space mission if you couldn't come back? That goes not just for uh, Evil in the Flowers, but for everybody. You guys can all answer that question. It's a pretty cool question. Like, if you could be one of the pioneers of space travel, knowing that you could never return to Earth, would you do it? If surviving Mars has taught me anything, it's that when you're on Mars, you demand luxury treatment, and you will leave as soon as it's not met. Because we had some cranky colonists in that game. It's like, oh, there's no casino here for me to gamble at? Well, I'm out of here. Okay, I, I'm not going to manually time warp. This is silly. Let's set that up. Do like two minutes out. Guess I need to make any changes. And let the time warping begin. Yeah. Good stuff. So the other sound clip, actually, no, I'm not going to spoil it. You guys know about the Hungry Hungry Hippo one. But I have another one. It's not, I haven't uploaded it yet or whatever you want to call it. But I think you guys are going to like it. Okay, Space Center. Can't believe you don't sell my favorite drink. I'm taking the next rocket back home. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Although I did sit down with Whistlebeak uh, the, the day after that stream last week. And he showed me some helpful tips to to get more efficiency out of my colonies. Do an advanced blah, blah, blah. I don't care. We'll do that one for sure. Rilip says, I love the idea of going to space, but I'll be honest, I don't even like camping that much. I don't think I'm cut out for hard living. I feel like that's why I asked about the conditions of the spaceship, right? Like if it's like a cruise liner. Or even just, you know, like an apartment building. Like, I, I don't need, like, maid service or whatever. It doesn't have to be a hotel. But if it's like a submarine or like an aircraft carrier even. I see, that's the thing. It, it kind of would have to be. If it's a generation ship, like, you gotta, you have to, it has to be disciplined, like, you know, all the way down the line. So... I could see it being run like a Navy ship or maybe even like in Starfleet. Don't they, they have civilians aboard from time to time. They're not really warships. They're not designed to be warships. They have, they're capable of combat, but that's not their main purpose, right? All right, let's go ahead and keep warping. And obviously, you know, our first starships aren't going to be Star Trek level spaceships. They're going to be more like, I don't know, a, a submarine in space. Look at the ISS. Look at the space shuttle. They're not, they're not luxurious. Although they have some pretty cool stuff up there. All right. So here we are. Contract deadline expired. Oh no. Okay. I'm sorry. It's fine. Go ahead and switch to the maneuver. Hopefully that we have enough time. I did give us two minutes to make this adjustment. Evil in the Flower says, I imagine a deep space would have, a deep spaceship would have basic living standards minus some necessary recycling, but just don't think about it too hard. I, You know what? I don't care. Like, oh no, we're drinking our own pee. And we're fertilizing the plants with our poop and all that stuff. Like, who cares? That's what happens in real life. You just don't see it. We've just turned it into an engineering problem. It's like, I, you know, if I can live at home and not have to get out of my chair, that's all that I need. 
I guess if they're gonna put me to work in like the botany lab or whatever. I don't really have any skills that would be useful to a space mission, but if I'm just there as a body to like be there, I don't know. I think the issue with generation ships is like the kids that would be born on these things have no say. I mean, not like kids have any say now, but at least they've got a whole planet. You're just born on this submarine. You can't leave and you're not going to ever like imagine you're the you're one of the middle generations, right? Like you didn't choose to go on this ship your parents or your your grandparents or whoever decided and now you're born on this thing and you have to live on it and then you have to have kids who were then maybe never going to see where they're going it's kind of dystopian okay i think we're good let's go ahead and point at eve where is eve there's eve focus let's go ahead and get things moving I imagine it would be kind of like living in a vault in the Fallout universe. Everybody's lives depend on you, so if you ever feel like being a little selfish, everyone's deaths are on you. Exactly. You probably can leave, yeah. The door's right there. You don't like it? Yeah. I guess that that threat is pretty good at uh, keeping people in line, right? Like, oh, I'm sorry, you don't like it inside our little slice of paradise here? Well, perhaps you'd like to take your chances outside. Okay. And there we go. Not too bad. So we're coming in at like a weird inclination, but there's not a whole lot we can do about that. It is Eve after all. So the main goal is going to be to, let me double check the atmosphere here. The atmosphere is at 90,000 meters. So we've got plenty of wiggle room there. And we've got 7,500 Delta V. So I think we'll be just fine. Guys. The next thing we want to do is because I do not trust the encounter thing, we're going to make a maneuver and we're going to warp to the maneuver. I no longer trust uh, the the encounter stuff. All right, yeah, a minute out is probably fine. All right, back to time warping. Here we go. But I think if we're ever going to colonize space, it's not going to be with giant generation ships. I think they're too slow. I think we're going to send... And if you guys remember, we read um, All Tomorrows on last Tuesday with possibly an alien. And in that, they posited that little, fast ships loaded with genetic cloning labs or whatever and robots would go set up a colony somewhere and then make a bunch of colonists and then hopefully they don't fall in love with the robots. Because that's when you have problems, according to the book. Okay, we're good. So let's manually time warp here. And we're almost there. We're only about an hour away from our even counter. So the first leg of our journey is just about over. We're going to get our encounter with Eve. We're going to get in a nice circular orbit. And we're going to try to pick a landing site. And try to pick the highest landing site we can find. We do not want to land in the water. If we land in the water, we're screwed. Uh, we don't want to land low down if we can help it. We want to land as high up as we can. So, if we can land on a big mountain, that's great. If not, we'll just someplace that is flat enough that we can take off from it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and enter Eve's sphere of influence. Getting a little getting a little antsy here, guys. It's getting it's getting interesting. 
I could deal cannonball if I land in the well. It's not really water. It's called the Explodium Sea, and I think it's made out of rocket fuel. But we don't know for sure. That was never clarified. Maybe it was, and I didn't read the science. All right, so we are now coming in towards Periapsis. Get a little bit closer. I'm going to set up the maneuver. And we'll see how much we need to just get a very loose orbit. And I, I know that I say that. Um, you know, what does it mean to have a loose orbit? It just means that we're... Our apoapsis is as high up as it can be without kicking us back out into the solar system. Because that'll give us enough time to kind of set up how we want to do this. Anyway, the reason I don't want to land in water is because then our craft will flip over and we won't be able to take off. And we'll be totally screwed. So we need to not land in the oceans. We need to land on land. And we need to land preferably higher up than rather than lower up. Because every single meter helps us. It gets us out of the atmosphere and it uh, does other stuff too. It reduces the amount of delta V we need. So it increases the efficiency of our engines and reduces the total delta V we need. All right, so for this, we want to do that. Okay, there we go. That's a nice orbit there. Only about 140 meters per second at delta V. And that's going to take 43 seconds. So let's go ahead and set that up. We'll go for five minutes. That'll give us enough time to position ourselves. So here we go. And in. We are unfortunately on the wrong side of the planet, it seems. That's okay. I think we have enough power that we should still be able to use our reaction wheels here. All right, so go ahead and point towards the maneuver. Okay, here we go. It's finally happening, guys. I never thought I'd see the day. I kind of just wanted to put off ever going to Eve and then just, you know, forget about it. But I know people would notice and then be like, hey, when are you going to Eve? You said you were going to Eve. Like, oh, I already, I already went to Eve, remember? Like, no, you didn't. You got to come back from Eve. Oh, yeah, right. All right, so let's start looking for some good landing sites. Ugh, the equator's gross. Um, hmm. Well, okay. So here's where we had our first failed landing. There are not a lot of great places. Hmm. I mean, okay, so theoretically, we could get into a polar orbit. That would open up, make it easier for us to land. I guess there's plenty of land here we could use. All right, it's just because the ocean side is facing the sun right now. All right, let's do this. So yeah, we'll do a couple of orbits. We'll wait for where we want to land to be in sunlight. We'll try to get as equatorial as we possibly can, although that might be difficult because we have nothing to base it on. So as you can see, even our, you know, equatorial space stations are not actually at the equator. Or maybe they are and everything's just tilted weird, but I don't think so. Where's Kerbin? Like, yeah, that's just, that's just screwed up, I think. I don't know. I wish there was a way that you could align yourselves equatorially. Hopefully that's something in KSP2 that they add. I know you can look at your your stuff here and tell you where your inclination is. It'll tell you your longitude of ascending node. I don't know what that means. That doesn't help me. I don't know what argument of periapsis is. I guess ejection, and that's... No. Hmm. Maybe if you look at this. Angle between the craft or the maneuver position around the orbited body and that body's trajectory around its parent. 
Um, I, yeah, I don't know if that helps me. Does anybody know? Okay, Kerbal experts in the chat. Is there a way, using this information, that I can get into an equatorial orbit? That is what I'm asking. If you know, send a, send an email to my web zone at www. Oh, hang on. HTTP colon slash slash www dot starshard zero web zone at um, starshard zero dot com. All right. We're almost there. Still two minutes out. This isn't even the hard part, and I'm stressing out about it. Ridiculous. Here is the EVE station. I feel like we should be bouncing off the EVE station. Don't know why we're not. Oh, okay. We're just going straight to Kerbin for some reason. It's a little weird. All right. Evil in the Flowers is an expert. Just point at the planet and fire all the rockets. It'll work eventually. I mean, yeah, theoretically, I'll hit the equator at some point. Hopefully. With a lot of speed. Okay, 43 seconds of burn time. So we'll start around 22 seconds. We just need to make sure to burn the whole time. Oh, man. Is it getting hot in here or is it just me? Oh man. So it's 7.42. So we still got about an hour and 15 minutes to finish this. I think we can do it. If I can land, getting back should be super easy. Well, okay. If I can land and get off the planet, getting back should be super easy. All right, longitude of ascending node, argument of periapsis, ejection. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got this. Oh, crap. I missed my window a little bit. That's okay. We're just, you know, we're just getting into... Uh, trying to get a capture. That's what this is called. Streamitis. I can't remember. Emmy Kins will BRB, so if you guys need her for anything, I guess ask me. I don't know if I can help you, but I'll try. Need any baking tips or K-drama or K-pop recommendations? Um, what else does she do? You need pictures of my cat? Uh, you'll just have to wait for her to come back. I'm sure she can find some to post on the Discord. Alright, so we are... Almost captured. Almost. Almost there. Come on. Hello there. Ice King wants to see the master at work. Well, you've come at a great time. We just captured at Eve. So the current plan is to... Uh, land on Eve and then return. So that's the goal for today. So here we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's a little bit of time warping. Need to get up to our sending node here to adjust our inclination a little bit. Are you streaming tonight, Ice King? Or are you taking the night off after yesterday's hectic time at the family event? I know if I had to spend any time with my family, I would need like a week off. Da, da, da. Okay, we're slowly adjusting our position here. The very large ship, if you haven't seen it yet, it's our interplanetary Eve landing craft. The only part that lands on Eve is this upper stage. The rest of this is just to go back and forth. So... That's why it's taking so long to turn. I think it has one reaction wheel, or one, like, dedicated reaction wheel, and the rest are just built in. It has a couple of probe cores, it's got a capsule. Two capsules, actually. Alright, so we're almost there. 
just about. Let's go ahead and hit the hit the engines to give us a little more gimbling. And we'll just go ahead and start adjusting our inclination here. 24.4, 24.3. And this may take a couple of passes. But I'm willing to wait. I'd much rather have us in a nice circular orbit and then land rather than try to, you know, get funky with it. Try to make things go too fast. That's how you end up having problems. Okay. We are adjusting our inclination very slowly, but it is definitely happening. Longitude of ascending node. Projection. Angle between the craft or the maneuver position around the orbit of body and that body's trajectory around its parent. Yeah, this is useful for, I guess, setting up transfers, but I don't know how useful it is to just have like a keeping running total of it. Argument of periapsis, I don't know how that helped me. Longitude of ascending node doesn't actually have a tooltip, which is kind of sad because I wish I knew what it meant. If you know what longitude of ascending node is, please send a. Actually, just put a comment in chat. Don't bother with the web zone. It'll take too long. Okay, 18. We've gotten it. We've got the inclination down quite a bit. This is working out. 17. Take a drink of water. And we can start surveying for landing sites, although I think most of them are going to be on the night side of the planet because we're looking at this big land area. That's where we're going to find our best options for landing. In fact, we can actually use a uh, Kerbal Net to find a good spot, hopefully. We can maybe find the highest point on the equator and try to land there. That would work. We're down to 14. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. 13.8. And so for those of you who haven't heard it yet, uh, tomorrow's stream will have Emmykins on. She'll be picking what we do. So if you ever wanted to see her or, uh, yeah, if you ever wanted to see her, you guys can see me whenever. If you want to see her on the stream, show up, show your support. I know she appreciates it when people show up for her. Don't tell her I said that. Okay, 11 and a half. 11. We're using a lot of Delta V for this. That's okay. It's all right. We brought a lot of Delta V for this. And keep in mind, we can still detach the fuel tanker. Uh, and hopefully there's still fuel left at the end of that. In fact, let's double check on that. So this is, oh yeah, look, that's plenty of fuel. And these still have fuel in them. Like this whole middle part has fuel in it. It's fine. We're all good. Actually, hang on. These are not... I don't think I have these set up to accept fuel from the center stack. I think we just ditch them when they're empty. Which is fine. I think that's okay. Alright, 7. 7.5. Almost there. It's very slow. Alright, longitude of ascending node. Still don't know what that means. Wait, okay, longitude is like up and down, right? So I guess that just means where your sending node is on reference to the planet. Hang on. All right, I think we're done for now. So can we bring up Curbnet? Is that going to help us at all? Curbnet, Curbnet, Curbnet. How do you open up Curbnet chat? Uh, no. No. Mm -mm. 
Kerbnet? Kerbnet, there we go. Hey, there we go. All right, let's zoom in. Refresh. Wait, can I? Okay, I can refresh it myself. There we go. All right. I want the field of view to be a little bit smaller. So basically what we're looking for, these are peaks. So we want to preferably, okay, we don't want to land in the Explodium Sea. That's not going to work. And it doesn't tell us what the actual, um, like height is, unfortunately. So that's not going to help us. So we'll just have to deduce by the color of the map. Okay. So let's continue then. We will turn off the ETH station as a target. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And we'll go ahead and set a time warp. Say five minutes. Get back to periapsis. That's going to take almost... It's going to take 23 days. Holy moly. All right. Well, the Kerbals have waited long enough. They can wait a couple more days. It should be fine. Here we go. Whee! Okay, and then coming back in. Slowly, slowly. Okay, so here we are. And we are, okay, so we have to remember these two things are going retrograde. These were wrong. Eve station is correct, but in a highly inclined orbit. And this is also in a prograde orbit, which is correct. It, just, it throws me off when I see these things flying around the wrong direction. Like, uh oh, am I going the wrong way? I'm not going the wrong way. It's okay. Everything's fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lower this. Keep in mind, we have 6400 Delta V to work with. Well, that's not true. I, it, I th don't think it's calculating it properly because of, um, well, various reasons, honestly. But mostly because, uh, because of docking, it messed all the staging up. So probably better off just watching the fuel tanks. But I think we'll be okay. Should be fine. In fact, what I should do, there's 129 units of fuel left in here. So we may end up ditching these during... I don't know, that just feels so gross, though. Mm. All right, well, we'll worry about that later. The main thing is we want to make sure that we have a full tank of fuel in the back when we leave. That's the big thing that we have to worry about. And that it has enough Delta V to get us home. But I'd much rather land get off Eve and then realize I don't have enough to get home because then I can just send another like refueling mission to come bring us back. That's not a problem. It's like, yes, it'll be nice if we don't have to do that, but I'm much more concerned about the actual landing than I am about the returning. Okay. So we are approaching the periapsis. We can probably start burning here. Bring our apoapsis down. Going through a lot of fuel here. And yeah, I remember Eve is just a Delta V hog. I'm sure you guys remember our uh, our first forays around Eve. We had some interesting problems that we had to deal with that were eventually solved, kind of. Okay, yep. We had to send a mining ship all the way to Gilly just to mine and then take off and then refuel the station and then get stuck around the station. And we haven't sent like an actual fuel tanker out here. I was going to, but it exploded after launch, so we couldn't send it. It's probably fine though. Let's check on the fuel tanks here. All right, they're still good. They still got over 100 left. And I, I'm hoping we're not draining anything from up here. That would be no good. 
I believe this is going to stop any transfer of fuel between these two things. Okay. Here we go. Bringing that apoapsis down nice and low. Oh, all right. Butterflies are setting in again, chat. Got to be you got to be ready. Now let's check. All right, so we have a couple of options here. Um, this is all Explodium C. Okay, I guess we don't really have that many options. Well, it's still in darkness, it looks like. I hope it's, it's not tidally locked, is it? Is Eve tidally locked? That would suck. I don't think it is. Like, Moho could be, but I don't think Eve is. I think it just spins really slowly. Like, uh, like Venus does. Okay, let's check on our fuel situation in the back. Still good. Still over 50. But yeah, that's gonna be a lot of engines to ditch. That's gonna really slow, slow down our burns, but... At the end of the day... The most important thing is that we have enough fuel, not that we are going fast. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So remember guys, when you're playing KSP, take deep breaths, drink lots of water, and uh, don't freak out, it's just a game. All right. These are just digital creatures who live inside your computer and would prefer that you don't kill them, but it's just a game. Not serious business. How are we doing on fuel things here? All right, still above 50, we're good. Yeah, this is fine. This is really, everything's okay. Yeah, sure, the lander's on fire and we're heading straight for the Explodium Sea, but probably okay. Besides, we have a funny sound clip to play if something goes wrong, so it'll be a, it'll be fine. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we're still 30 seconds out from our periapsis. We might have to stop burning here shortly. Keep an eye on those back tanks. Yeah, we may have to uh, adjust some of the staging or manually decouple these because I don't want to mess with staging on this thing. It's a disaster. Okay, we've passed periapsis. So yeah, I think if, if these hit zero, I'm just going to manually launch them, like just run the decouplers manually and not try to stage them because that just sounds... Sounds like a huge hassle, and it could result in me decoupling the entire ship from itself. Okay. Come on. Anyway, this is why everybody hates Eve. Okay, we're under 50 now. Because look at this burn, just to circularize. It's disgusting, is what it is. It's not right. It's not... It ain't right. All right, okay. Okay, how are we doing on these? All right, we're under 50. We could also just enable crossfeed across those, and that would probably be fine as well. Like we did bring a lot of fuel and it's okay if we use some of it. Oh, jeez. All right, well, the periapsis at least is starting to flip around. But yeah, I think we're, we're gonna go ahead and decouple these as soon as they hit zero. All right, yeah, periapsis is starting to go down. We, I think we wanna get down to about uh, 120 kilometers would be good. 
My only concern is that ditching these would limit some of our stability, so maybe we'll just ditch a couple of them. No, no, because I have the struts all screwed up. It's either none of them or all of them. I should probably keep an eye on my periapsis here. Okay. I can do that from here. Yeah, that's good. Alright, alright, alright. Almost out of fuel. Just a little bit more. Almost. Last little drops. And cut it off. Alright, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and decouple these. There she goes. And this one. And this one. And the other side. This one. I mean, it's not pretty, but it, you know, it gets the job done, right? And last one. There we go. And we're going to keep burning. There we go. Now we're just down to this bit and the fuel tank. So it'll take a bit longer to do everything, but I'm okay with that. That's fine. Okay. We're good. We're all good. Hey, there's the sun. Look at that. And here is a nice big open area we can land on. Look at that. So basically any part of any side, anything on this side would be fine. Preferably some of the darker areas. I think those are the peaks. Like we'd ideally like to land as high up as possible, like I said. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter too, too much. We're not currently connected to the curb net for whatever reason. All right, getting our periapsis down. What did I say? 120 kilometers. I'm okay with that. Still plenty of fuel left in these tanks. These ones are, I mean, these shouldn't matter too much. Hey, uh, oh, wait, hang on. Bug for Din Sad, or Bug a Din Sad. Hey, another Brazilian guy, all right. Welcome. Uh, surprisingly, my channel attracts a lot of Brazilians for some reason. Maybe it's just KSP, but uh, glad to see you're watching. I hope you're having a good time. We're about to land on Eve and hopefully return. That is the goal for this, okay. Uh, that is the goal for this evening. I was worried I overshot my periapsis there, but it does not appear that I did. 124, 123, 122, 121. We'll cut it off at 121 just to give ourselves an extra thousand meters of wiggle room. And we will now coast. So, so far, so good. Let's check in. and try to do an anti-normal. Ah, was that a follow that I see? Thank you. Excellent! Welcome, welcome to the channel. Hope you like your space games. That's pretty much what I do, but you know, sometimes other stuff shows up. It's just whatever looks good. All right, Emikins is back. So if you guys need any K-pop, K-drama, or cooking tips, recommendations you can now ask yeah so we're gonna try to get our inclination as close to zero as possible it doesn't have to be exactly zero it just has to be like under two I would be okay with and I realize it's gonna take a while you know because of the gravity but I'm willing to accept that. Come on. Actually, this will tell us. So we're at 176 right now. 
So actually, you can kind of tell where you're at. It's it's very roundabout. It's not ideal. Like there's no easy way to tell where you should where your uh, nodes are because you don't have a target. Kind of have to estimate. Want to get this thing equatorialed out? That's all that I ask for. Is this? Map five. Okay. Yeah, that we failed that one. I think the only one we're concerned about right now is Explore Eve. That's all I'm concerned about. Alright, we're at 6.4. Well, this is gonna take a while, isn't it? See how how fast are we burning fuel here? Very slowly. That's good. Oh, I so can't wait to see the uh, interplanetary drives in KSP2. It's going to be amazing. I'm sure you guys have seen the Orion drive, the one that just shoots nuclear bombs out the back. There's also the metallic hydrogen one that they showed off in one of the trailers. And I think they were mentioning in the most recent dev diary that one of the engines is so big it does not fit in the VAB. Like, you have to actually assemble it assemble those ships in orbit using the orbital construction facility or whatever they called it. It's gonna be awesome. That's another thing I didn't mention that I was looking forward to that in KSP2. Orbital construction that doesn't suck. You can't understand everything you say because English is very basic, but you're loving the live. Well, that's all that I can ask for. If you if you want me to explain anything that I'm saying, I'll, I can do it as best I can. But uh, if you're just liking the game and you're liking liking my voice or whatever, then so be it. I'm happy. Okay, so we're still at six degrees. We still need to get that down. Taking its time. I realize that. I'm a little concerned we may have overshot it. Now let's turn off the engine. Maybe we just accept six degrees? Like, that's not going to kill anything, is it? I'm okay with it if you guys are. And it would save us some delta V. So maybe we just go for it. Okay, let's circle back around to the periapsis like so. There goes our debris. And now is the time where we circularize at 120 kilometers. Here in Brazil, your voice is what we call a locutor de radio. Oh, well, maybe I should move to Brazil, where people would actually appreciate my voice. Somebody on YouTube described me as the Bob Ross of KSP, which uh, is cool. It sounds like the voice of the radio announcers. That's cool. I always wanted to do radio when I was a kid because that was the way to, you know, broadcast yourself back in the day. Now you can just do YouTube or you can do Twitch or podcasting or whatever. So it's it's definitely opened up. Okay, so there we go. Did I ever tell you guys about the radio, like, fake radio shows me and my friend used to make? I'm sure a lot of people did this with tape recorders. Like, how's the weather today, Bob? And stuff like that. We Oh, wait, okay, hang on. We actually did that. So, in my English class uh, in ninth grade... We read Romeo and Juliet, and one of the assignments was we had to do, like, a news report that was set in that setting, and me and my friend volunteered to do uh, the, like, commercial breaks. So it w everything was being recorded with a video camera, but during the breaks, I had my tape recorder, and we'd play it for the video camera so you would get you'd have like the news report going on and then it would stop 
they everybody just kind of freeze. We played the commercial and then they'd continue on. Boy, he was a real weirdo though. It, you know, I say that as I'm the one here streaming on Twitch. Like, who's the real weirdo? I think we were all weirdos back then. Alright. So I think we can start burning now? Hmm, maybe not quite. I'm actually worried. Actually, let's take a look here. If we want to do this right. Oop, too far. We want to get it to 120,000 meters. Like so. Yep. Something like that would be perfect. So I need to start burning now. Let's go. It was kind of a weird assignment, though, now that I think about it. A lot of the stuff we did for Romeo and Juliet was weird. I think one of the things I did was I made a fake magazine cover. We, so, okay, so we had the newscaster thing. We had to, obviously, we had to act it out because it's English class. So we did scenes from the play. I did a fake magazine cover that I called Insular Magazine because that's the opposite of Cosmopolitan. Um, we watched the movie that had the boobies in it. That was kind of fun. Like, that's, that's the day you want to go to school. You don't want to miss that day. All right. You got to go do a live now? All right. Yeah, go do your live. Have a, have a good live. Okay. We are at Apoapsis. It is 320,000 meters. We have liquid fuel. Plenty of liquid fuel. We're still doing all right here. Come on. Almost there. Well, not really. Look at how slow, slow we go now that we ditched all the engines. It's definitely a far cry from when we did the transfer burns, but you know, we're in orbit. We're not worried about anything, so this is a fine opportunity to kind of be a little more efficient, to sit back and just enjoy the ride. Although I am still trying to finish this mission tonight. I guess another week of KSP wouldn't kill me. At least not literally. You know, when I was in high school, is that okay? Now this is a different high school from the Romeo and Juliet thing. Although I think we did read Romeo and Juliet again in my senior year of high school. Oh, what a disaster that was! At least I knew the play by then. But uh, my favorite class was chemistry, and I was convinced that I was gonna go into chemistry as like a profession. But. Then I didn't, and I joined the army instead. And now I'm here. I don't know if that's good or bad. I feel like it's okay. Like, sure, I could have been a famous chemist and, I don't know, solved all kinds of things. And Like, I was good at it in high school. I don't know if I would have survived college. I barely got through college for business as it is. All right, we are still burning here. Everything is just fine. If our periapsis gets too low, although I'm going to call it, and we'll do it again as we whip around. Because this is taking a long time. Holy moly. Okay. All right, I'm going to call it there. And we'll uh, do it again on the next go around. Okay, let's get the adjustment one there. 160, 150, 128. Almost, almost. And that's gonna take one minute burn. All right, that's much better. So let's go ahead and set a maneuver, an alarm for the maneuver. We'll say 
two minutes. I'll just warp around real quick. Oh, and all this warping is good, because eventually the side of the planet we want to land on will be facing the sun, I hope. Because it's very difficult to land in the dark. Especially since I need solar power. For a lot of stuff. Alright, point towards the maneuver. Burn time is a minute 11 seconds, so we want to burn, start burning at about 36 seconds. You just want to, you know, cut it in half. And then remember that there's 60 seconds in a minute and not 100. So that'll throw you off. I wonder if it'd be better if they expressed this in terms of seconds. Probably not. I think enough people know how minutes work. They don't have to do that. And I hope everybody else is staying hydrated tonight. I know... I know how difficult it can be when you're in the middle of doing something, but it's important to stay hydrated as much as you can. Okay, one minute. One minute, people. Well, minute 20 seconds. Oh, this is the most boringest part. We're just sitting here watching and waiting. And I would time warp, but I don't know, I'm so close. It doesn't feel like it would accomplish very much. Like I'd be doing these little micro warps. You need to get up and get some water. Hey, get up and get some water. Yeah, that's important. Or whatever drink you're drinking. It doesn't have to be water, I guess. Some people drink tea. Some people drink coffee. Probably not this late. Probably not a good time to be drinking coffee. But, uh, you know, he is probably fine. Water, some wine, a beer. That is Monday night. Like, I don't know how much you want to get buzzed on a Monday night. Maybe that's the best time to get buzzed. I don't know. Ooh, okay, we overshot our start time a little bit there, but I think we'll be okay. I got distracted by chat again. It seems to be a recurring theme around here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pass here. Mm -hmm. Apoapsis is still pretty high. But if we have to do another pass, I'm okay with that. It is not a problem at all. As soon as our periapsis starts dropping, though, I'm going to cut it off just to be safe. Oh, okay, it's starting to drop. I think once it gets down to 35, I'll cut it off there. 40. 39. 38. 37. 36. And 35. Alright, cut it off there. Do another pass. Lower it, lower it, lower it, lower it, lower it, lower it, lower it. And 121 is fine. It doesn't have to be right on the dot. All right, and for this one, we're going to say one minute. I think that'll save us from the worst part of, of the waiting. Excuse me. That's why you got to stay hydrated. Broke gets dry, and then you start making weird noises. And if there's one thing that I know people on Twitch hate, it's weird noises. Right, there we go. And point towards there. I want to start burning at 20 seconds out. So I'm going to be laser focused on that number. Don't try to distract me this time, chap. I feel. Didn't I put in one minute? I feel like it stopped us a little early. It's weird. Yeah. Focused. Focused. Do not look at chat. Looking at chat. Almost. Maybe we could start burning now. It can't hurt, right? We burn it like half throttle. That could work. 
I'm okay with that. And then once we pass the halfway point, what was the name of the streamer in the Kerbal? Fa um, Wolfie Chu, I believe, was the name of the streamer. So if you're looking, are you? Why are you looking up Wolfie Chu? Again, seeing what she's up to. Hi guys, I'm an anime furry girl. Please watch my stream. Oh, you were trying to distract me. No, it's too late. I already undistracted myself. All right, all right. Oh, this is taking forever. Give me the periapsises. Okay, 140. 139. Okay. Almost there. Um, this is like the third or fourth pass we've done. Okay, almost done, almost done, almost done. All right, we'll do one more pass here. Just a little teeny tiny. Okay, perfect. 6.9 meters per second. And this time I'm going to put in the maneuver for 30 seconds. Go. Warp me around, please. I hope they fix the camera in KSP2. I don't want to be going inside the planets when I time warp. That's weird. All right, you got water? Boo. Are you a ghost today? Very spooky. I like it. Okay. We are now going. I don't know why the maneuver is like that. It should just be a retrograde. So let's just go ahead and turn that off. Uh oh, something got screwed up somewhere. What happened? Oh, geez. Did I do something weird? Why is the periapsis now over here? All right, whatever. Let's. Um, hmm. Well, let's check our fuel situation. We should be fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're good. We've got 3,600 in the orange tanks alone. In fact, what I should do is transfer out all the fuel from the orange tank so I can make sure that this thing is full at all times. You missed her Kirby stream yesterday? How could you? She's got to stream KSP at some point. I mean, how old was that fan fiction? She must have gotten the QR code by now. And that fruit. And the perfume made from the fruit. Like, surely she wants all that stuff, right? All right, so this is going to do that. And there we go. All done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to the periapsis real quick. Do, do, do. And again, we're still waiting on... Uh, the sun to like peek its head around the nice part to land on because we do not want to land in the ocean. We've already established that. I have no interest in trying to land in the ocean with this thing. It is not designed <laughs> when it... uh, yeah, I could have gone in her stream and been like, hey, when are you playing Kerbal Space Program? She'd be like, what? But, like, you know, because the Kerbals like sent you a copy of their game or whatever. I read the I read the story. It was all over the internet. You're, you're a hero. They worship you on the planet Kerbin. It's very strange. I don't know why. Anyway, here's a link to the fanfic. I hope you don't think it's weird. I didn't write it. Okay. So we are in a nice 120,000 meter orbit. I am okay with that. 
So now all we're going to do, we're going to zoom out. So when I time warp, it doesn't break anyone's minds. And we're going to, hang on, actually, we'll do this. So we're going to wait until a big old chunk is going to be right below us. Oh, that's, that's tasty right there. Okay. So, all right, guys, are you ready? This is it. So if you're if you're not in here, you're going to miss the most important thing I've ever done in KSP, which is um land on Eve and then hopefully return. All right. So keeping in mind that the atmosphere starts at 90 and it gets very thick, it is time now to um Hmm. Wait a minute. All right, hang on, chat. Did I make this correctly? I think we need to decouple. Okay, so here's what we need to do. We need to decouple this from the main assembly. So let's go retrograde. Yeah, this is this is why I didn't want to do like a docked vehicle, but I think we decided that was the easiest way without some real shenanigans. So we need to decouple here and that's going to get rid of this whole section. Then we need to get rid of the docking port, which is attached via this decoupler. And then we'll see how it goes from there. And we need to kind of hurry this up because we need to get into the atmosphere sooner rather than later. All right, so we're going to go ahead and decouple. Almost. Almost. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, uh, undock. Okay. And now, Werner engines are on. RCS enabled. RCS enabled. RCS enabled, RCS enabled, RCS in Okay, everything's enabled. We're good. All right. These engines are now. We're going to hang on. Hold everything. Hold the phone. We want these to come on first. So let's go ahead and hit these. Um. Hit, hit these. What? Staging locked? H okay, hang on. How do I unlock staging, chat? <laughs> how do how do I unlock staging? Quick. Asking for uh, for me. Do I, I need to Google this. All right. Uh, KSP. How to unlock unlock staging? I'm I mean I'm glad it was locked, but now I need to unlock it. Uh, click the staging. Blah, blah, blah. Do I have control? I have control. Um. Hmm. Okay. All right. How do How do I know? Um. Stage lock. Press Alt and F12. Hit Alt L. Okay. Alt L. Alt L. That's not it. That's not working, chat. Um, hold on. Okay. Uh. Hmm. That's annoying. Alt L? Maybe? Not working. While at my station. All right, hang on, there's the thing. Time warp also locks the stage. Am I time warped? No. Oh, wait, yes, I was time warped. No, that doesn't seem right. Okay, I think we should be good now. Aha! All right. Twitch engines engaged. Let's do it, chap. Is 
This is it. Coming in for a landing on Eve. I hope it works. If it doesn't work, you're all fired. Thank you, Vulcan Rider. I, I'm not sure what was causing it, but we figured it out. Okay. They're going, they're going. All right, okay. I can do this. I've done this a million times before on Kerbin. It's no different. We just have to make sure that we're entering the atmosphere where we want to enter. Okay, yep. Yeah. We don't want to spend too much on uh, this stuff, so hopefully we can get it nice and good. Nice and good and great, preferably over these mountains here. So if we're at 120 and this is at 60, our 90 is going to be about halfway. So we want to get it maybe down to like 20. Of course, we don't want to spend all of our Delta V on this, even though these are designed to be used, but these do have the Werner engines attached. And we are going to need those, so let's try to keep them alive, huh? All right, I'm going to call that good. We're going to go ahead and decouple the next bit here, which is the heat shield. There she is. Inflate the heat shield. Heat shield inflated. Okay. Next up is going to be the drogues, then the main chutes, and then once we've landed, hopefully we've landed, um, and then we have to manually actually... When does this happen? This happens... When does this happen? I think we do that manually, actually. I'm not seeing it on the, uh, the staging. Yeah, that's weird. Really? It's just not on here? It's nowhere on the staging. That's very strange. Um, <laughs> Wait, is that one? Okay, yep. This one's up there. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It's just not in staging for some reason. Okay, no time to worry about it. We'll just manually do it. Um, let's actually get that pinned. Because we're going to need to decouple that whole bit at some point. Because, yeah, we could decouple. The reason we did it this way was so it would uh, flare out properly. Okay, here we go. We're going to be entering the atmosphere hopefully very soon. Because otherwise we're going to be landing in the drink, which we do not want. So maybe we... Go ahead and give this a little more, a little more oomph. Well, that's not even lowering our periapsis, so I guess it's not doing anything. Fine. Because we're hitting the uh, the heat shield, maybe? Alright. RCS on. This is going to hopefully keep us upright during our uh, landing procedure. Uh, <laughs> why? Wait, why was Rillip upset about getting water? I don't know. He just said boo. Okay, we, we really need to start entering the atmosphere, like, yesterday. Okay, well, we're getting close. So we're about 10,000 meters, so we'll be landing hopefully around here, and not over here. 
but Eve's atmosphere should slow us down very rapidly. Okay, 98. I mean, if we screw this up because we land in water, I don't know. We're gonna play the sad music and then I'm I'm gonna go to go to bed. Come on, atmosphere, atmosphere, atmosphere. Give me some atmosphere here. We could have started this a long time ago. I wish I had quick save enabled. But such is the life of hard career. Oh no, as we're rapidly approaching the Explodium C here, this isn't good. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, there we go. Blow me down. Blow me down. Slow me down more. I mean, I guess we could theoretically overshoot and land here. That would be, that would work. As long as we don't land in this tiny little spot here, we'll be fine. The air brakes are out. Yeah, like this area would be fine too. But I'd prefer to land like down here. If we gotta land somewhere. Okay, yeah, I think we should be aiming for this now. So we're clearly gonna overshoot this peninsula. So as long as we don't overshoot this island, we have a pretty good shot at it. Okay, all right, I'm feeling a little bit better now. All right, starting to get some flame effects. The RCS is doing its job very well. It's keeping us aligned properly. Yep, it's definitely going there. You can see it. Okay, we may we may be ending up in the drink chat. This might just be how it, how it ends. But maybe not. Maybe we can slow it down enough. Come on. Come on, baby. Sit down. Uh-oh. That's not good. We could be having some alternative issues here. Yeah, we're, we're clearly headed straight for the drink. Oh well. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Yeah, I, I bungled that. That's on me. It's all right. Well, we'll at least land on... We'll at least have landed on uh, Eve, right? Like, even if we don't get the stuff we wanted. I mean, and Valentina might just very well explode here. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's not... Yeah, that's not what you want. Um. Okay, yep. Yep, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, Valentina's not happy about this. So the heat shield didn't work. Nope. And... Yep, there we go. Alright. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how the, the career ends, chat. We'll have to, uh... I don't know. Try again, never. The tag says no mods, but what about downloadable content packages? Well, um, it's yeah, I do have the the DLC. The heat shield does not work at all. That heat shield is garbage. Uh, all right, so Valentina, thank you for your service. You will join Jeb in the annals of Kerbal history. Uh, how to avoid that? Have I made a propeller craft before? No, but I can I can make one now if you want. We got some time here. 
Urban loves it. I know he does, but he's not trying to land on Eve. You only just got a four engine propeller plane to work. All right, well, let's see if I can throw something together. Actually, hang on, let me go to my, uh, let me go to the sandbox game. Yeah, F's in the chat for Valentina. We're all very sad. Um, I figured something stupid like that would happen. But, uh, we tried. We'll come back for KSP2 and try to actually pull it off. Or maybe we'll come back in a couple of weeks with renewed vigor after getting our butts handed to us in XCOM. Let's go to the test. And Band Defender wants to see a propeller craft. I'm not much of a propeller guy. I'm more of a Kraken drive. Oh, here, I'll show you the Kraken drive. Uh, it's gonna be XCOM Enemy Unknown. You notice you can action key propellers to deploy them. You can also assign the propellers to RCS translations to adjust them during play. That's a lot of information. Yeah, I don't typically use... I typically don't do anything with planes, honestly. But I will show you what I have done. Hmm, if it loads. There we go. So we have the XK-1 Kraken, and I believe this has the wheels fixed. So check, wait, no, this does not have the wheels fixed. Hold on. There we go. All right, wheels have been fixed. Is, I think this might be, I don't think this is the latest design actually, hang on. Uh, all games. Hit one, crack in. This is the definitely the best one. All right, so let's go ahead and launch this bad boy. You made an AC-130 that can reach 900 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I was going to say 900 miles an hour is uh, faster than the speed of sound, right? It's a little, a little speedy. You bought that game at the same time you bought... Oh, well, I highly recommend some XCOM. All right, so check this bad boy out. Let's go. No fuel or engines necessary. Just pure Kraken power. Look at it go. You want to go 900 kilometers? Wait, 900... Not... Okay. Wait, 900 kilometers an hour. Okay, that's more than... I don't... I don't know how many meters per second that is. 253 meters. Okay, well, we're definitely beating that. This thing goes supersonic. Shoot, it could probably go hypersonic if I wanted it to. I mean, I know it can, because it can go to orbit. I'm already faster than your airplane. Yeah, this is a bit of a... This is a bit of a cheat here. But I will show you the trick to it. It's it's a very cool piece of tech. May I... You, yeah, absolutely. Is it on Kerbal X? I can either download it from there, or if you got it on Steam or whatever, and try something out. It is? All right. Yeah, just drop the link in chat. I can click it from there. Links are allowed. All right, so let's revert to the launch, and I will show off. Yeah, Kerbal X is way easier. So let me quickly show you what's going on under the hood here. This is the Kraken Drive, and it works just like a the KC-130. I like it. So basically what it does, I have assigned the pistons to shift and control so you can accelerate and decelerate to, uh, you know, go forward and stop going forward, hopefully. Beautiful. All right, so let's try out Band Defender. I hope you're not banned from other channels. Go to the Space Center. So a lackluster end to our Eve saga but I think it's for the best if Eve remains unconquered. All right, let me click that link. Do do do. Download. Your craft has downloaded. Okay, thank you. Oh shoot, now I gotta like put it in the folder and everything. All right guys, give me a second. Oh, I like the look of it. 
very cool. I'm I suck at making planes, so whenever I see people make planes, I'm like, oh, that's neat. Okay, let's find some ships. Base plane hanger. Grab it out of downloads. All right, we should be able to grab it now. You're only banned from King Dog Speed's channel, but that's because I told him it's wrong to joke about being a cult leader. Oh no. You think the ban was just arbitrary, and he didn't want me chatting on his show. Interesting. All right, all right, all right. So, all games. Let's see if we can find it here. Hold on. Uh, stock. Base plane hangar. Did it? Okay, it did not end up here. That's weird. All games? Yes. Do I don't. Do I need to restart the game for stuff to show up? Or is it gonna show up now? You shouldn't. Yeah. Where did I save it to? I saved it to the craft file. Let me actually save it to one of the actual saves. So we'll go to test, go to ships, go to space plane hangar, and hold on. I put it in the wrong spot. Oh, KSP, why are you like this? Technical difficulties, everyone. Okay, this is the KC-130. move it over here and then move it into the proper place ships space plane hangar copy paste copy paste okay there we go there it is all right Ooh, look at that i'm digging those propellers that's very cool uh, let's put some spotlights on there. All right, so let's check out the actions. Toggle ramp. Um, is there anything I should know about? Holy cow. So this rarely needs full throttle. You like the pink headset, but I want to match with the blue or red shirt. Yeah, I have a couple of different shirts that I wear. It's just kind of random what I end up wearing. Um, I'll talk to my wife about getting some matching shirts. This vessel has no remote controlled or manned command modules. What do you mean? Right here. Do I need to put somebody in there? I guess. Where are all my astronauts? All right, we need a pilot, so grab a pilot. There we go. Let's go ahead and launch. Yeah, that's weird. I think they're off on some they're off on some kind of adventure, I assume. I think, actually, I might have them in another one of those crack and drive craft. So that's probably where they are. You wonder what shirt looks best with the seat and headset? Well, the seat is gray, so it can pretty much go with anything, I think. And this is a nice design. A little back heavy though. Okay, it has no staging. So what do I do to to turn on the engine? It's just one. That's clearly not right. Two. Nope, that just turns them. Okay, you deploy the tail fins and props with. So they need to be deployed first. Okay, I see. Throttle zero. Oh, throttle. Wait. Hold on. Three and four reverse engine. Okay. Hmm. It's not doing anything. Five. Okay. They're not doing anything. Um. Oh, wait. Uh oh. Okay, hang on. <laughs> All right, reverse to launch. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I've never flown something that needed to be uh, specially turned on like I'm in a cockpit here. Okay, so. Just try two. Five, six. Oh, okay, I see now. All right, all right. The 130 rolling down the strip. 64 troopers on a one-way trip. Oh, okay, tail strike. Now let's try that again. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh... The... F12 and tap J to adjust the long... The plane is... Okay, it takes off on its own. I don't need to pull back. All right, we'll try that then. Yeah, definitely a one-way trip for these guys if it's going to be blowing up on the runway. I like to think most of our parachuting accidents happen after you jump out of the plane. All right, so it doesn't... I don't need to do anything. It's just going to... Now, I really doubt that I could land this thing. But uh, I guess we can try. J and L adjust the propeller trims. It lands easily? Oh, well, okay, that's... I'm sure it lands easily if you know how to fly a prop plane. Okay, wait, so J and... J and I adjust the trim? What does that even mean? Okay, yeah, yeah it's not... <laughs> it's not taking off. What am I doing? You should be tapping J. Okay. J and L. I and K adjust... Oh, what the heck? Man, this is... I need a joystick for this, I guess. This is nuts. All right, all right. Let's try this again. Uh, So two and then five and six. Oh, shoot. I screwed that up. Turn, turn, turn. Let's stay on the runway. Okay, you should be tapping J. Why tapping? That adjusts the that adjusts the trim. Try F12. Okay, that's also going to take a screenshot, but I guess that's okay. Now let's really give it some power now. Okay, I think I might have adjusted the trim too much. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> I'm going into reverse thrust. Okay, I, I I went too far. I see, I see. This is interesting. I've never messed with propellers before. So this is all brand new to me. Okay. So we want to activate both and then turn them on. And then power them up to three-fourths thrust. And then we're going to go F12. We're going to hit J. And we want to do that, I guess. I don't know what that does exactly. It looks cool, whatever it is. Okay, trim is set to 80 degrees. Is there a way I can see that? Just tap J and L. It doesn't really tell me, though. Let's see if this thing can take off on its own. All right, no, not really. Okay. I mean, it's getting there. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. Another tail strike. That's all right. That's all right. We're learning. We're learning. Okay. So, oh, select one propeller. Oh, uh, okay. 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 I see. I see. So we'll have one of those open so I can see the trim. Uh, is it the propeller? Okay. I think it's, it's the actual fans. Nope. So they're currently set to that, and we want to turn them on, and we want to throttle up, and we want to get them, the trim is set to 80, you want to get that to 56, you say, okay. Oh, I see, okay. And then once you're up, you want to go to 60. Oh, I see. Well, that's cool. Get the gear up. 
Dun, 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 and this thing does water landings, right? Let's get up to full throttle and start really taking off. Let's know. I cannot do water landing. <laughs> uh, this is not a water takeoff craft. It's true. Neither is the actual C-130. All right. All right. So it flies. It's no fighter jet. It's definitely a cargo plane. Um, I do like that you put the science stuff right here so it's easy to get access to. What is? What are these? Navigation lights? What's in the inside? Oh, just the same stuff. All right. Cool. The abort sequence will drain the fuel from the wings. All right. Well, I doubt I'm going to be able to land this, but we can, I guess, attempt it. I'm used to flying a more agile craft, though this is, this is all new to me. Definitely flies, though. That's pretty cool. You, lights will activate the navigation lights for nighttime. Oh, that's cool. You did the navigation lights wrong. Okay. Oh, look at them go. They're, are they on the wrong side? Warp to nighttime and take off. All right, let me see if I can land it first. We'll see if that is even possible with my skills. All right, is there anything I need to know for a uh, landing trim, or am I just keeping it at 60 and trying to come in as flat as possible? Drop to 80 meters. 80 meters a second or 80 meters overall? Eight, okay, 80 meters above sea level, gotcha. And I need to line up with the runway here. This is, I have to use my flight sim training. Approach the one runway from 10 meters up. Oh, geez. That's gonna be pretty close. Okay. We can try that. Ooh. I mean, I already don't like landing. Remember K and I to adjust your tail fins. Um. I don't know exactly what that does for me, but okay. Okay, and I. K to pull up a little more. Okay, I see. All right, we'll just try to land it all scuffed like. This will be fun. And then we'll check out the night time, and then it's actually time to wrap it up for the day, so. Uh oh. Let's, uh, let's cut the engines. Uh oh. Dun, 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 dun. Uh oh. Oh, landing gear. Okay, yep. <laughs> that wasn't gonna work. <laughs> okay, okay. Revert to launch. Press one as soon as you touch down. What is. Oh, that turns on the reverse thrust, I imagine. Whew, you put a lot of thought into this. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I'd never bother with planes. Uh, there's no warp to nighttime, is there? I guess we'll just warp, uh, do it, uh, manually. Okay, it's nighttime. We're turning the lights on. Okay. Oh, no, don't, don't do that. Game. Okay, lights are on. They're not doing anything, though. Do I need to... Oh, let me do this. The... the reco oh, reco oh, I'm out of power. Oh, okay. Doesn't have a way to make power, huh? Oh, recover... Ah, I reverted, didn't I? Okay, we can just time warp from the... Uh, the, the whatever. Do, 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 do. And nighttime. 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 All right. So no, give it a little bit more. It's still a little brown. Okay, where is the Milky Way or whatever? 
herbal equivalent. Okay, let's try this. We're going to launch the KC-130. Sure, bring Bob. It doesn't really matter. Remember to use C to view internal view. Okay. Oh. You used to have a way to make power, but you took it out the last second. But you don't know why. Of course. Alright, let's zoom on in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, see, we are inside the plane now. Flaps are down. Uh, what am I looking for in here? It's already over 200 parts. All right, Bob, we're gonna we're gonna throttle up here. Let's keep an eye on our. Where's the throttle? I guess that's it, huh? Oh, I think we're airborne. Notice you can see so clearly. I mean, it looks normal to me. But like I said, I don't typically fly a plane, so. And I was looking for the navigation lights, but I don't see them. Oh, there they go. Neat. Try setting the light boost. Oh, okay. Oh, I crashed. Hey, it, it can land in water. Ugh. I mean, you know, it's not intact, but it's it landed. All right, all right, all right. Let's just uh, revert to uh, base plane here. Sort of, sure. <laughs> I mean, if you're gentle enough, you could probably set it down without losing too many parts. Yeah. Well, any anytime you land in water, you're not really landing, right? More of a splashdown situation. All right. So I think that's going to be it for today. We didn't really succeed, but we also, I don't know, we failed in a very spectacular. Oh, you can drop all four engines off. Nice. We failed in a spectacular enough way that I'm satisfied so we'll we'll put Kerbals on the on the back burner for a bit. And let's see who is live this evening. We've got Herb Adventure. We have Matt Kamart. We have Awkward Jen, who is playing Oxygen Not Included. And I think I owe her a raid. So we'll go raid her. Thanks everybody for coming out. Thanks. Yeah, I, that was a good time. I've never flown a prop plane before, so. It's an all-star stream night. It really is. It's a lot of people. Yeah, Matt, uh, Urban's my, like, go-to morning guy, and I, I'm typically streaming at the same time as Matt, so I don't really get to watch him. But we're going to go check out uh, Awkward Jen. She's doing a little oxygen not included. You were lurking while playing D&D. &D. Oh, naughty, naughty. Hope you're not DMing. That's no good. Oh, wait, nope. No raid. Hang on. Why did it kick me out of the raid? I have to wait for the timer to count down. Wait, it, that's even worse if you're a player. You can't be lurking. I guess you can just leave me on mute, whatever. You're a drunken rogue. Then I guess that makes perfect sense. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow. Remember, Emmykins is going to be on the stream tomorrow. So if you like her and want to see her on the stream, uh, she'll be in the driver's seat. So she'll be, she'll be playing some games. We'll be doing some quizzes. It's going to be a good time. I will see you guys then.